Aloha, my internet family, how are you? As you can see, we're not printing today. We've got the K40 laser back out and we are going to work on part two of the Cohesion 3D laser board and the Lightburn software upgrade. We left off last time just finishing up doing the physical installation of the Cohesion 3D laser board. Today we're gonna to talk about installing the firmware and the options that you have there. So let's do it. So before we get too far into the details of the firmware, I do want to put out a special thanks again to Cohesion 3D and Lightburn Software for sponsoring this video series. Now let's jump into firmware. Essentially you've got three options. The first option is vanilla smoothieware and that is what comes pre-configured and pre-installed in a very basic format on the SD card that comes with your laser board. You can actually pop that right into the laser board, power everything up, and if you opted to install the, the graphic LCD, you can use that to test and move around your laser at this point. There's a couple of tweaks to the config that we'll talk about that you may want to make, but in general, it at least allow you to make sure that you got your directions correct, that you're able to home, uh, etc. The second option is called cluster. Now Cluster is a custom version of SmoothieWare with some improvements that was made in collaboration between Lightburn Software and Cohesion 3D. And your third option is Gerbil, Gerbil, let's call it Gerbil, uh, G-R-B-L. And I'm going to consult my notes to explain in detail a little bit about these, so bear with me as I'm looking down. The SmoothieWare options basically allow you nicer motion than Gerbil and it's more highly configurable. It supports the SD card for headless jobs and not just having firmware on it and it allows you to have the LCD screen uh, and etc and more features. The custom version was modified to overcome raster speed limitations um, to allow better dithering and grayscale imaging than what stock smoothieware provides. Gerbil on the other hand is very lightweight and fast and it supports instant stop. Instant stop is something that is not yet supported by smoothieware in either flavor. Gerbil also has the ability to enable laser and dwell for piercing thicker materials. That's probably not something that's going to apply much to the K40 because of its size and power, but if you're using this board on a larger 60 watt or a bigger machine that might be something that you're considering more. Well I guess if you had if you opt to install a motorized uh, drop table in here that might be something to consider with the K40 as well. The other thing about the two is with the smoothie wear options and the cluster option your configuration is hard-coded. Uh, it's basically stored in a hard file or a flat file, a text file on your SD card and it's read every time the board boots. Whereas with Gerbil it's configured on the fly so that allows Lightburn to change settings and parameters on your machine dynamically that you can't do with SmoothieWare. That said all of those out there for most cases the cluster, smoothie, uh, cluster flavor of SmoothieWare is probably going to be your best option and that's what we're going to focus on covering today. So let's take this SD card and head over to the computer and I'll walk you through a couple of the configuration items. Okay, we're gonna start off on the web and I'm going to point you towards three different locations on the Cohesion 3D forums. Uh, I will have links in the description down below to these pages so don't worry about trying to track them here. But the first one is going to be the laser board firmware and config stock files. These are the ones that are included 
on the SD card when you purchase the board. Before you do anything else, it is a good idea to grab a copy of these, download, stash them away somewhere so that you always have them as a backup to go back to. The second one is the improved version of the SmoothieWare firmware that improves the raster speed. This is what they call a cluster and this is what we're going to work with here. Now, the, the link in the description actually spells out pretty easy how to install this. You're just going to download it from the box, going to put it onto your memory card, put that in the machine, power it up, and then you're going to wait for the LEDs L1 through L4 to all fire up and let you know that the new firmware has been loaded. This will use the same configuration file regardless of if you're using the s default SmoothieWare firmware or if you're using the, the improved uh, cluster firmware. Okay, so we're, we're going to focus on that part. The next thing that we're going to look at is this third page here, which is setting up the correct bed size. Now, I'll note that every K40 is going to probably be slightly different. You can start off with the default configuration. Use the either the Lightburn software once you move on to that, or use the, the graphic LCD to jog around and find what your maximum X and Y dimensions are going to be. And when we get to the config file, I will show you how to set that up and to change that. But this link is here as a reference uh, in case you need to go back and do that later. So let's move on to the configuration file itself. It's a bit intimidating if you're not used to looking at code, but this is the description of your machine in its entirety. And for the most part, you do not want to change many things in here. Um, if you do, your machine may not operate or behave as you expect it to. However, there are three things that I'm going to point out that you may want to change. And again, this is a learning curve or trial and error to find the best settings for your machine. Once you find those settings, you can always remove the SD card, power down the machine, of course, remove the SD card, pop it back in your computer, make the tweaks to the text file here that I'm going to show you. Pop the SD card back in your laser board, power up the machine, and those changes will take place. Of course, you can find more details about everything that I'm talking about in the forums uh, on the Cohesion 3D site. And so I'm just going to gloss over them so that they're fresh in your head on what you want to look at. The first one that you may want to look at here is the acceleration. By default, in your file, it's probably going to be set to 2500. There's two things that are going to factor in how well your machine moves for you. One is the acceleration. The other is the amount of current, which is down here. Alpha current for the X stepper and beta current for the Y stepper. Now those are the default values and you might need to play with juggling those settings, goosing the current up just a little bit or down a little bit, as well as adjusting your acceleration here to find the smoothest movement patterns for you and the, the best raster engraving. For me, 1200 on acceleration, although that's fairly conservative uh, with the default current settings it seems to give about the best results. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look for in here, the last thing that I'm going to show you quickly is how you adjust or where you adjust for your bed size. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a search for end stops because it's in that section. And it's right here. In the end stops section, we're going to focus on the alpha max and the beta max. Now the alpha max is going to be your 
x direction, your left to right, and the beta max is going to be your z. In my case, my total build area is 310 by 224. So when I home the machine, I'm able to go 224 down and 310 across. That's going to be slightly different for yours, and the factory numbers that are in there will give you a good indication, you know, or a good starting place until you can find those and adjust them on your own. Once you make the changes to the config text file, you simply want to save it. Make sure that it is on your SD card, pop it into the laser board, and boot your machine, and those settings will now take effect. That's it. We'll leave it at that for today. On the final part of this series, we're going to get this actually connected via USB to the Lightburn software. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to set up a test cut, how to adjust your machine um, for your initial or a kind of a default settings to work you know, best with Lightburn. And from there, you'll be on your own to play and explore and learn and burn new things. All right, so again, special thanks go out to Cohesion 3D and Lightburn for sponsoring this video. Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode, and we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.